ബാഹുമാനീമ Assalamu alaikum viewers I am your host Muhammad Shah Nawaz um uh, from uh, live iftari transmission from uh, Revive FM alhamdulillah we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for providing us this blessed month of Ramadan and um, and by his grace uh, we are completing inshallah the eighth fasting day alhamdulillah um we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, <coughs> give us uh, strength and uh, give us uh, ease us uh, to um continue uh, the fasting uh, till this end uh, till end of this month and uh, we pray to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that uh, uh, allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us sabr patience and um, accept our prayers accept our fasting accept our ibadah accept our worship in this blessed month of ramazan uh, <coughs> uh brothers and sisters uh what i would like to do uh in this uh, short session is like uh, let, let's try to ponder on a beautiful hadith of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, as we are nearing the iftar time maybe uh, we are in the last segment of uh, fasting so uh, i would like to mention a beautiful hadith of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam related to iftar yeah before uh, i jump on uh, uh, before i pop into that hadith yeah what i would like to emphasize is uh, uh, i would like to emphasize uh, um uh the objective of this uh, month so what w- what we do is actually in in dunya we uh, keep uh, doing amal uh, we uh, we perform acts uh, with some goal and objective there is a name so uh, every sane person uh, while performing any act uh, he, he would have uh, an aim he would have an objective he would, ha- he would have an uh, goal without any goal without any objective without any uh, aim uh, no act is performed yeah so like like you're coming to masjid what's the objective of coming to masjid is to perform salah you're going to office what is that is your objective is to do work and obviously you're going to office to earn money yeah and you're going to restaurant your objective is to eat so if you're not doing if your objective is not accomplished with your act then that act is something you need to revisit it and you need to understand okay what you are doing is right or wrong so so the what i would like to emphasize here is like uh, the objective of this month what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in this month what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is expecting uh, from us in this month and uh, what what should be uh, what is the objective and what is the goal allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has set for us that we need to understand if you are doing yeah i i understand that we we do a lot of uh, um we do um um lot of prayers we do uh, tarawih we do lot of nawafil we do tahajjud and we are fasting yeah so so what is the objective of uh, doing this uh, there should be an objective there should be an aim without an objective i think whatever we are doing is something is uh, it will go in um is i can say that i i would not say it as uh, useless but uh, we have to uh, understand uh, whether it is 
optimize whether we are doing in uh, in an optimized way or not whether we are doing it in a potential way in a refined way uh, in a very purified way or not our acts and deeds so what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions like okay he when when he talks about this month when he talks about uh, uh, the saum when he talks about fasting he says like i'm i'm making fast uh, obligatory on you i'm making fast fars on you so you become uh, uh, God away, uh, so that so that you become muttaqi, so that you attain taqwa, so you um, uh, gain God consciousness, God awareness. So that's the that's the ultimate objective and goal He is setting up uh, uh, for you um, uh, in this month of uh, Ramadan. So. So we do a lot of things, yeah. We we need to assess actually. We we pro, we do prayers, we do fasting. We need to assess with, with this worship, with this ibadah. What is that we are achieving? Have, have we gone closer to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala? Are you feeling any happiness inside you? Are you feeling any sukoon and uh, are you feeling any peace and tranquility inside you? That's what we need to assess. If you are not assessing these things and we are continuing acts and acts and acts. I, I don't think that that, that is going to lead you towards uh, uh, any good. Obviously, Allah is there to give you ajr. He is going to reward you for every act. Even Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, like looking at the Quran is ibadah. Looking at the Quran is ibadah. Touching the Quran is ibadah. So Allah is going to reward you. He he is merciful. Um, but being his slave, uh, being a worshipper, it is our duty to make sure that what we are doing is that reaping as benefit is that what is expected from us is that what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is expecting from us that's what we need to understand even if uh, if you look at the uh, hadith of Rasulullah what he says is man sama ramazana man sama wa qama ramazana imanan wa ihtisaban ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min zambi he says that one who uh, prays and uh, one who fasts and pray in the month of Ramazan like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives us all, all his past sins so he says that iman and bahti saban. He has put a two condition: one who prays and one who uh, stands uh, uh, fast in the month of Ramadan with iman and bahti with uh, with assessment, like assessing yourself. Yeah, with the intention of assessing yourself, what you are, what you are doing. I could say I I, I can, uh, let me put that in a different word. Uh, I would say bahti is nothing but retrospection. What works well for you in Deen? What is going wrong? What is going well and what is going wrong in Deen and in relationship with Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, uh, in, in, in your relationship with the uh, with uh, with His creation? So we, he says, he say he is giving this beautiful month. He is giving this one month, thirty days, um, to uh, for you to assess, like you know, like in any field, in uh, uh, in any field, in, even in your office, in your project. You have something called retrospection. Yeah, retrospection means like we figure out what goes, what is going wrong in our project, what is going well in our project. So what is going wrong? We we pen down everything and then we uh, uh, we, we then we uh, try to analyze. Okay, and then we try to uh, find the root cause of uh, why things are going wrong. How can we improve? Yeah, how can we uh, improve? Then we set targets of improvement. So this is what Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is expecting from us. Like He is asking is to assess ourselves yeah assess ourselves and then take it from forward from there la he said like okay i'm making fasting obligatory on you um, uh, as other nations uh, as the people who came before you did la the reason is so you become god conscious so you become god awareness so so you assess yourself what is taqwa basically is to assess yourself where you stand uh, where you stand in uh, in in relationship with allah where you stand in relationship with uh, his prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam this is what is all about so when you pray uh, in this beautiful hadith rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam adding this word ihtisab ihtisaban he uh, he, he beautifully uh, um, um, uh, enclosed, uh, encapsulated uh, uh, many meanings in it. Like he's saying, like you can pray, you can fast, but the main thing, the condition is like with pure intention, you need to assess yourself. You, with pure intention, you should do an assessment that what you are doing, what is going wrong with you in Deen. Uh, 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 like for example, is your uh, uh, tilawat uh, uh, of Quran is good? 
is your understanding of Quran is good? How, how, how far you have gone uh, into understanding the uh, words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How far uh, you are uh, doing well in relationship with uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? How, how far are you have uh, started abstaining uh, from uh, the sins and prohibitions of uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is expecting from us. This is what his assessment is all about. This is what this is, what is muhasaba. Like you assess yourself to, towards the betterment. You assess yourself towards uh, enlightenment. You assess yourself uh, how you obtain from uh, wrongdoings. So this is what I would like to emphasize. This is what is the emphasis of, of uh, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, um, um, highlighting uh, in uh, uh, Quran, so it's not like uh, we um, we keep praying, we keep praying, and we are not uh, getting any result. The result is ultimate satisfaction. You should feel that actually. How, how close you are to your God, how close you are to your Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, that satisfaction comes to your heart. You, your heart is the parameter. Your heart is the actual uh, what I could say. Um, uh, a meter which which tells you w w what degree you are reaching in in the proximity and closeness with Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. How how far you are going away from sins. How far you are abstaining yourself from wrongdoings. So that's the ultimate objective of this blessed month of uh, Ramadan, which is which is basically focusing on retrospection, which is basically focusing on ihtisab. And, and, and one more thing, uh, what we need to understand is like, uh, as I mentioned uh, in uh, my um, khutbah, uh, the ayah, which says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala introduces this blessed month with the uh, uh, Quran. So we, we should try to connect with Quran, we should try to establish uh, um, relationship with the Quran in terms of uh, recitation, in terms of understanding, in terms of uh, uh, Im implementing, in terms of uh, uh, understanding um, uh, going deeper uh, into Quran, that is what is expected uh, from us. It's not like, uh, um, uh, and uh, we should try to cultivate the habit of uh, adopting uh, um, acts which we can continue. It's not like we do um, 50 rakats every day, 60 rakats every day after, even I know some people after Travi, they also do a lot of nafils in this month. But what happens like after Ramadan, even they, they everything goes off, everything goes off. So cultivate a habit, or uh, um, develop or adopt those worship, act, worship acts which you can continue even after Ramadan regularly with, with ultimate satisfaction. Even if you do, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ex expects, expects quality, not the quantity. That's what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentions in a, in a hadith where he says like, um, in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the, uh, the acts of um, the consistent acts, the consistent and continuous acts are more um, beloved in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even if it is less in quantity. So, always Allah and His Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam expects quality from you, not the quantity. And uh, uh, a sajda with, 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 a, uh, intention, with a pure intention, a sajda realizing the God, a sajda realizing uh, um, with God consciousness, one sajda is enough to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what we are doing, we are doing so many sajdas, but not even in single sajda we have that true love, we have that true relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even one sajda is enough. In the Persian, there is one Persian proverb, they say like, rahmat khuda na baha jo uh, uh, the mercy of uh, um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't expect the quantity, but he expects only the quality. Uh, quality, uh, so, so always try to focus on quality instead of uh, quantity. That is what this month uh, tells you. That is what is the objective set by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is not asking, he is not uh, uh, um, uh, mentioning that uh, uh, I am making fasting fuzz on you so that you become uh, you become an ultimate worshipper. No, he mentions you become a muttaqi. That is, you become uh, a person with God consciousness. So, so, le uh, so, uh, having said that, uh, I would like to uh, come to a beautiful hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam as we are uh, uh, nearing uh, iftar time. So, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentions a beautiful hadith where he say mentions lisa uh, imi farhatan the person who fast for him there are two happiness uh, you're going to get two happiness one is uh, after a fariha so um, when he completes his fast yeah, when he um, breaks his fast he becomes very happy 
You know, I mean, you know what happens actually when you, when you just take a sip of water and first bite uh, in iftar actually, it just gives you immense pleasure and Im immense happiness actually. It just implicitly tells that, oh Allah, we cannot, we, we are totally dependent on food and water. If you don't have food, if you don't have water, we're going to die. It's, it's, it's your mercy that... Uh, that we, we uh, it's your mercy and it's it's because of you you're providing all sustenance to you so implicitly a slave of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala worshiper of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the creation of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala thanking allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for give uh, for, for providing all these uh, um, bounties and uh, favors uh, uh, on his uh, create uh, on cre on creation so so when you take the first sip so the the, uh, the one who breaks the fast he becomes so happy actually Alhamdulillah, when he drinks the water, he says, Alhamdulillah. When he takes a first bite of a, a, a date, he says, Alhamdulillah. It, it just tells, implicitly he says that, okay, I can't, I can't live without water. I can't live without uh, um, food. Oh Allah, you are the one, you are not like anyone. You are not dependent on anyone. It's, it's my attribute that for, for me to live, for me to breathe, I need to eat. For me to breathe, for me to sustain, for me to act, for me to work, I need food. I need water. I need, uh, I need all, uh, all kind. Uh, 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 I need uh, other things. Yeah. But for you, you are not like any anything. You are above everything. You are Subhan, and you are not dependent on anything. We are dependent on all worldly things, and you are not dependent on anything. Subhanallah. This is what is. This is what a, a person who breaks the fast internally communicating. He is not telling it from his mouth, but his whole body, his whole feeling, the whole uh, uh, the feeling what he realizes at that point of time is uh, communicating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa mentioned that he feels happy when he breaks the fast. And then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa mentions wa iza laqiya rabbahu bisawmi. And he also uh, becomes happy when he meets his Lord uh, due to his uh, saum, due to his uh, fasting. Fasting, in one of, fasting is one of the amazing worship which connects you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which uh, which gives uh, you an opportunity to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not like what people may think, why we are fasting? You know, like fasting is not, uh, in, in one of the hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentions, like this hadith is mentioned in Ibn Majah, li kulli shay in zaka, uh, zakatul jasadi asiyam, uh, as sawm as, asiyam, as, 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 Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. For, for everything, there is a charity, and the charity of your body is uh, uh, fasting. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is also giving, you know, like when, when you have, uh, uh, what is charity basically? It's, it's just cleansing your wealth. If you have money, if you have sufficient money you, and you have surplus money, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking you to give charity. He's ordering and he's commanding you to take some m money out of it and give it to poor people. It's, he's, asking the, the, to, uh, he's asking you to cleanse it. So similarly, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said like uh, cleansing uh, um, everything, every wealth has got a charity, but the charity of your uh, body is uh, 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 some, uh, the fasting. Like uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, Allah has given a beautiful opportunity to detox our body and cleanse our body uh, from all physical impurities by uh, uh, by fasting. So fasting not only removes the physical impurities, it also cleanses uh, the um, internal and uh, spiritual Im impurities and uh, and also rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned the fasting in itself is sabr fasting in itself is sabr it's an act of sabr so so what, what the hadith what rasulullah is telling uh, uh, during the iftar the one who breaks the fast he he gets happiness when he when he uh, eats uh, when he drinks and w w the act of drinking and eating and breaking the fast in itself is thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says about the second happiness is that the slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the abd of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he meets his Lord, for a due to his uh, uh, due to his fasting, the fasting enables you, the fasting enables you to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know why? This is one of a very special ibadah. In one of the hadiths, uh, 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 where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a hadith a qudsi Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that um, for every act of worship there is a reward but for the act uh, for the for saum for fasting 
I am the reward. That is, I meet the one who fast. That is, I give my pleasure directly to the one who fast. So Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is connecting the abd, the creation uh, of uh, Allah subhanahu wa taala with uh, uh, with His Creator by um, by giving us uh, a fast, by giving us a tool called fast uh, fasting. So so when we fast, actually we should we should realize we should think see it's all deen is all about realizing things deen is all about you know uh, fe- uh, uh, you need to feel everything to get the real taste of uh, uh, the um, acts of worship so when you do an iftar think that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is looking at you allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is meeting you allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with you he's with you that's what allah subhanahu that's what rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said like uh, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala meets the one uh, who breaks the fast. The reason is like because of his fast. The fast becomes the reason for um, for a sa'im to connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is very uh, uh, important. And uh, so what, what, what is that? See, are we really seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Are we really meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we break the fast? That's something we need to understand. Rasulullah says, like, uh, while, we, while you break the fast, you meet Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meets you. He, uh, he connects with you. So uh, uh, do we feel that connection? Do we feel that relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? If not, we need to work on ourselves. We need to work on ourselves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions uh, in a in, in, in lot of narrations that one who, uh, one who remembers me, uh, I sit with him. I, I, I be close with him. Have you ever experienced that ecstasy? Have you ever experienced that that our God, our Creator, one who created us, one who created it? He mentions in uh, Holy uh, Holy Quran um, um, in a beautiful verse: "Wallahu akhrajakum min butuni ummahatikum." Wallahu akhrajakum. He is Allah who took you out of uh, from your mother's womb. He is your Creator. He is having a direct connection with you. He is not leaving it to someone actually. He said like, I am the one who took you out from the womb of your mothers. La You came out, you, 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 you came out from the womb of your mothers in the state that you didn't know anything. You didn't know anything. Like at this point of time, we know a lot of things actually. We know what is, we know what is solar system. We know what is black hole. We know what is a, uh, we, we, we know uh, uh, the scientific theories, we know the scientific fact, we know a lot of things, we know quantum theory, uh, you know, like we, we, we are reading so many things, we gain a lot of knowledge. Um, we have knowledge about sociology, we have knowledge about economics, we have knowledge about accounting, we have knowledge about useful things as well as useless things. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that like, when you came out of the womb of your mother, from the womb of your mother, like you, you came as if you came, you didn't know anything. You didn't know, la ta'ala muna shayya, you didn't know anything. But, but you know everything now. Only thing what you don't know is your Lord. Is your Lord. When you were in the womb of your mother, the one thing what you knew was your Lord. When you came out, you forgot your Lord and you started knowing everything. But now it's time actually to know your Lord, to know your Creator, who is He. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Holy Quran, so that you become God conscious, so that you, you know who is your God, you, you know who is your Creator. So we need to try, we, we, need to, we need to establish this relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is very important. That's what the fasting is all about. You know, like in fasting, what do you do actually? You know, can, can Water is halal, yeah. Water is halal, and uh, food is halal. There are so many things which are halal. But what do you do from from morning to sunset? You made everything a haram on you. You're not drinking. You're not. You're not eating. Yeah. There are so many things which are legal for you. You're not doing it. You're not performing those acts. Yeah. Why? Why? Because you are trying to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are trying to obey Allah and His Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa This is what you do in, in the whole, whole fasting um, time, um, maybe around 16 hours or 18 hours. Even things which are halal, even things which are halal, you made it haram on you. Yeah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expect the same thing out of Ramadan. 
he says, he, what he says, he says like, okay, where things which are halal, in this month you made it haram on you. You're not eating anything for a stipulated time, of, for stipulated hours and for a stipulated time frame. But when you go out of Ramadan, whatever is prohibited, you're making everything, you're ma making everything permissible on you, which I have prohibited, which I have made non-permissible. So what Allah, so when you can do this, when you can make halal things haram on you for a stipulated time frame, during the fasting time, why can't you do this act out of Ramadan that keep the haram thing as haram and halal as halal? Why can't you abstain when you have that willpower? In the month of Ramadan, you have that willpower. I have that willpower. I have a bottle, water bottle in front of me. I have some dates in front of me. If I want, I can go and eat it. Nobody is there to see me. Nobody is there to see me, but Allah is watching. I have that feeling, I have that consciousness in me that Allah is seeing me, I, I should not drink the water. Allah is seeing me, I should not take the dates. I have that consciousness, I have that awareness, I have that awareness and consciousness that Allah is around me, Allah is around me. How can I go and drink the water? Even people, is, people are not seeing, but still I can't go and drink the water. Nobody is going to question me. But Allah is with me. Because since Allah is with me, I have that feeling, I have that consciousness. I'm not drinking the water. I'm not taking a bite from the day. I'm just waiting for 10 more minutes. I'm just waiting for the time to go, time to reach the iftar, uh, reach the iftar time, and then I can break my fast. So when I have this feeling now, Allah is saying, Why can't you cultivate this feeling? Why can't you develop this uh, realization outside Ramadan? That's what Allah is mentioning you. Why can't you do this in Ram uh, when you are able to do this in Ramadan? Why can't you do this outside Ramadan? In outside Ramadan, I'm just asking you to abstain from very few things. Very few things. If you look at the don'ts, if you, if you look at the don'ts in Quran, it's very handful. Very handful. You can count in fingers. So he's asking, only well, very handful things are don'ts. Why don't you abstain yourself from that? When you have that willpower to abstain yourself from the halal, why? Why can't you develop that willpower outside Ramadan to abstain yourself from haram? This is the ultimate objective what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking you. This is what we have to develop. We have to develop this willpower actually. Now we have a very strong willpower in this whole month saying that no, whatever Allah said is ha said as haram, we are gonna we're gonna we're gonna abstain from ourselves. We're gonna abstain from that. So why can't you develop this habit? Why can't we carry forward this habit for next 11 months? So that's going to be an amazing thing. We, we, do, we take a lot of New Year resolution, even though that New Year is not, uh, first Jan is not our New Year, our New Year is Muharram, we do a lot, we, 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 we lot of New Year re resolution. We will not do this, we will not do that. Have you ever, have you ever taken a re New Year resolution from Ramadan? Why don't we just, uh, um, Jot it down. What what's our uh, resolution for our uh, next eleven months? Let 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 let's start from here. Let's start from here. So this is what Allah expects from us. Like it's not it's um, it's not like just uh, we have to um, um, uh, pray. We have to um, um, do all rituals in the month of Ramadan. It's not like that. These are secondary things. The, the Tarawi and Tahajjud, all these are Nawafil, these are secondary things. Primary thing is focusing on yourself. Qad aflaha man zakkaha. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that um, indeed the one who cleansed, who one who cleansed his internal behavior, one who cleansed his soul, one who cleansed his impurities, he is successful. So we have to go towards ultimate success. We have to go towards ultimate success instead of uh, instead of uh, limiting ourselves to some uh, rituals and uh, uh, customs so that, that, that we have to focus on the ultimate objective and we have to focus on the ultimate goal so let's try to uh, um, work on this uh, let's try to um, um, you know uh, uh, in your company uh, um, you have there is a process called appraisal appraisal you put your comments, you put your comments, uh, worker comments and then manager comments, you put your comments that, uh, so um, for the whole year, what all uh, main uh, projects and what all main important tasks you have done. Against each task, you appraise yourself, you put your comments saying that I have done this, I have done this, I have contributed in this way, I played a key role, I have uh, been a, a key player, I worked with uh, um, um, architects, ma many things uh, against each uh, 
task, you appraise yourself, and then your manager puts comments where whatever you have said is right or wrong, he justifies and he puts his own comment. So similarly, let's try to take this Ramazan as an appraisal man, wherein you, 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 you put down all things what you have done in this whole year and try to assess yourself again, okay, I have uh, uh, put some important things what, what uh, you have uh, done in this whole year. Uh, whether it is uh, um, uh, is useful or useless, and then try to assess yourself what you have done is right or wrong, and then leave it to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Let Him put a beautiful, let Him put the comments on it. So He is all, He is He He is an uh, He is uh, so He is merciful. He is Ghafoor. He is Rahim. He is Rahman. He is not going to put any bad com comments uh, against your uh, comments. It's like. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned Ta'ibu min al-dhambi kama la dhambala The one who repents from the sins as if he, has, he hasn't done anything And also Rasulullah is giving an opportunity by uh, In his narrations that one who prays in the month of Ramadan One who stands in the month of Ramadan One who fasts in the Ram month of Ramadan With the pure intention of assessing himself And with, uh, with, with a full belief and, uh, and confidence on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala With a full total faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he is going to forgive his sin, sins and he is going to help him in improving um, his attitude, is uh, improving his relationship with his Lord and, uh, and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is the ultimate goal and this is the ultimate objective of Ramadan. This we have to inculcate, inculcate in our behavior. Yeah. So just move away from the rituals and slowly let's try to focus uh, more on uh, um, uh, internal uh, stuff yeah um, we have done a lot of externals yeah let's let's try to focus on internals um, because the, the internal uh, um, entity is the one where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala resides and uh, Allah in the hadith Allah says Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't see your uh, body he doesn't see your physical nature he looks at your qulubikum wa niyatikum. He looks at your heart. He looks at your internal characteristics. So let's try to focus uh, on our internals in this beautiful month of uh, uh, Ramadan. Um, I would like to conclude uh, um, my short talk uh, with a uh, small dua. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidi Al-Anbiya wa Al-Mursaleen Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanatum wa fi al-akhirati hasanatum wa qina adhabanna Rabbana sina qibatana fi l-umuri kulliha wa ajirna min khizi dunya wa adhab al-akhira wa Allah um, wa Allah you are kind and merciful forgive our sins um, oh Allah, accept our prayers, accept our fasting, accept our worship what, in whatever way we are doing. We know we are weak, and you are, we know we are weak. You, you are Qadir, you are, you are full of Qudra. Oh Allah, forgive our sins and accept our prayers and accept us in your court and um, give us, uh, make us uh, perfect in the ittiba of uh, your Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi l'akhirati hasana tamakina adhab al-nar. Bihaqqi la ilaha illallah wa ma'alina illa al-balaq. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. قلت وعلى رزقك أفترت وصلى الله تعالى على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه برحمتك يا أرم الرحمين أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله 
أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن اللهم صل على سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله في الأولين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه في الآخرين اللهم صل وصل وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه في الملأ الأعلى إلى يوم الدين اللهم رب هذه الدعوة التامة والصلاة القائمة آت سيدنا ومولانا محمد الوسيلة والفضيلة والدرجة الرفيعة وابعثه مقاما محمودا الذي وعته وارزقنا شفاعته يوم القيامة إنك لا تخلف الميعاد